You're watching GW Smoke Break TV. We're here at Hall of Flowers 2023 here in Northern California. And it's been such a blessing to continue to grow with the industry, adapt and evolve, man, from Barcelona to the West Coast. And one thing that remains the same, man, is that the cultural wealth, the cultural sovereignty behind this industry is what makes it come alive, you know what I'm saying? That's exactly why we're here. And this series is sponsored by Woodwide Craft. And we're gonna show a lot of love to our legacy community. It keeps showcasing the, those stories that are authentic, you know what I'm saying? That are really gonna last forever, you know? So join us for an exciting fucking dope set of interviews brought to you by none other than GW Smoke Break TV. Awesome to have time to make a, a quick interview with Sequoia. She's so busy. And how you doing? I just want to say thank you real quick, you know? Oh, yeah. Thanks for coming out and saying hi. Of course. Yeah. So, Sequoia, for those of us in the community that don't know who you are, if we could please get a quick introduction. Sure. Uh, my name is Sequoia Hudson. I am from Humboldt County. We have a small family farm in eastern Humboldt County called Eight Mile Family Farms. Um, I have been involved in the industry for a very long time. I got involved in advocacy very early on. I've been super involved in helping to create sensible policy and regulations for small family farms in Northern California and throughout California in general. Um, it's been a long haul. It's been a roller coaster for sure. Um, but through my involvement in the community, both in cannabis world and non-cannabis world, I've had the fortunate ability um, opportunities to connect with a vast array of people in our community and one of the things that we did very early on was develop a, a brand and a company that was modeled after an agricultural cooperative um, with the intention of being a cooperative. We were very early on regulated out of being able to do that because the regulations were so restrictive on co-ops. We weren't able to have more than four acres collectively with our members and so being that we had seven founding farms we quickly outgrew the size restriction on the co-ops. Um, and, we, and we actually very quickly started working with many farms in Humboldt County. At one point we had over 250 farms that we were working with. But that company was the Humboldt Sun Growers Guild and the brand was True Humble. And we just kept going and working the business model even though we couldn't be a co-op. And we've had many successes and many failures and we've built the company up and fallen down a few times and built it back up. And right now we're, um, we're very fortunate and blessed and excited to say that we're still here and we're still in business and we're actually providing a lot of really valuable services and opportunities for a lot of small brands out of Humboldt County. Um, if I may real quick yeah. before we move further, which we're definitely yeah. going to do, can you please share some of your early memories from Humboldt Life? From Humboldt Life? Well, some of my earliest memories, so I was born and raised on the Monterey Peninsula. My dad lived up in Humboldt, and my mom lived down in the Monterey Peninsula. So I, oh, I'm sorry, do you mind if I ask what part of Humboldt? Um, at that point in time, he was in, uh, in Ferndale, actually. He had oh. bought a creamery out in Ferndale. He actually came to Humboldt traveling up and down the coast looking for Burlwood. He was a very um, influential person in the beginning, creating the Burlwood industry. Did you know that Sean Stam's dad, I think, has a similar story? Or, or no, but they I probably think, know each other because he I was very connected out in Petrolia and Honeydew and yeah. out in that area. I, so I, I shouldn't will, misspeak. I think Sean's dad was in a Burlwood. Okay, you know? well, so my dad was traveling up and down the coast collecting Burlwood to bring back down to Monterey to Cannery Row. They had a Burlwood business down there where they were making furniture and stuff. And ultimately, he ended up staying in Humboldt, not ever coming back. And so I got to travel between both areas with the family and visit during certain times. And, and um, ultimately, when I became an adult, I needed, I was trying to find somewhere to live to raise my young daughter because it's super expensive down in the Monterey Peninsula. And Humboldt was really the opportunity that I had because my dad lived there. And so I headed north and... Oh, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> were you like, I want to ask something. Were you around the plan already? Me? Were you around the plan already? Um, not more than like a, like we had, we used to have what was called a phototron. We would grow a plant in our closet because we had to hide it. Um, my husband actually was arrested when he was 12 years old for having a seed on his windowsill. And so, and that I mean, was... It's not funny, but... 
No, I know, but that was like how the, it's so changed so much the dynamics. Like, it's really crazy to see him now growing weed in a commercial setting where his criminal career started because of a seed on his windowsill. <laughs> so to get this straight, you didn't really start working with the plant until you were an adult? No, I wasn't working with it. Other, not other than just on a personal, like we grow a couple plants in our yard. Like I definitely smoked herb as a, as a teenager and enjoyed it and appreciated. But as far as um, growing on a farm or growing commercially or in a mass quantity to provide to others, wasn't until many, many years later. Um, but coming to Humboldt, my father actually, I don't talk about this a lot either, but my father was actually one of the original owners and inventors at American Hydroponics. And so he was in the industry as far as he was creating um, creating mechanisms that the, the cannabis cultivators in Humboldt County started utilizing on their migration to indoor cultivation. They were using the, the lighting systems he was creating, they were using the hydroponic systems that he was creating. And so by default, our family kind of got involved in the cannabis industry, even though they were actually doing this for food production and for other means, it became a very popular item in the area because of cannabis's retreat indoors, because of the the, ca the camp era and the enforcement era and everything that was going on. And so um, when I first came to Humboldt, actually because of American Hydroponics, um, I met a lot of people that were that were working in the production lines on the hydroponic side of things and they were in the community and they were, um, they, a lot of them were probably growing their own cannabis also. And so we kind of became involved in the cannabis community. That was kind of the beginning of the influence in my life was getting involved with those people and then in the bigger community. And then when we moved here, um, just, you know, our kids, we had kids, they were going to school, we were getting involved in just not necessarily cannabis community, but the broader community but then also getting involved in things like reggae on the river and a lot of the festivals and, and then that's like volunteering. How we, yeah, <clears throat> volunteering and doing things. And that was a lot of fun over the years for sure and definitely connected us with the kind of people that really resonated with us and who we wanted to be around and the culture and being involved in a lot of those events is a part of who we are. And um, it was, it was a, a lot of fun. And I, re I really missed that part of, you know, what we used to do in the community like that. We, as we all started doing our cannabis cultivation on our hills and on our farms, that was where we were most of the year. But like reggae specifically, that was our opportunity to come off the mountain and come hang out with everybody. And like we would all volunteer, we'd throw this great party and have all kinds of people come. And it was really an amazing time in my life for sure. That's so beautiful. And I think we're gonna go back to that. Sure. And before, one last question before we used to talk about all these beautiful products. Yeah. Um, some arts fairs going on. Yeah, it's come, is it coming up or is it going on June, right now? No, June, June. Yeah, June. okay. Are you gonna go? I think I am. We actually recently got recruited on Jaw Med, which is the medical crew that works a lot of the festivals. Oh, you're still volunteering. So, so we're gonna be at Summer Arts Festival with Jaw Med. Yeah. What's John Med? I'm sorry. What's John Med is the medical crew oh, yeah, that yeah, does got all it, the got medical it. inside. Got it. Excuse me. Okay. So I used to work for the parking crew and the vendors and stuff, and now we're on the medical crew. I went for the but, first time last year. It was awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing some festivals this summer. So what I honestly believe in, what I feel, is like you being in this space, literally right now, Hall of Flowers. Uh huh. You're bringing like that magic. That, I sure hope so. No, you really are, <laughs> dude. You know, it's in your smile. It's in the way you talk. So I'd love to to talk about. Um, these products, products, because I also feel that they personify and embody this, this energy from the Emerald Triangle. Uh huh. Sure. So um, we're the Humboldt Sun Growers Guild. I guess I didn't get into further. The company that I developed with the other seven farmers was the Humboldt Sun Growers Guild. Um, we developed an in-house brand, which is True Humboldt, and Humboldt Sun Growers Guild is now a micro business license that offers services to a lot of the local farms and a lot of the small brands in the area. We do bulk uh, procurement and sales of their bulk herb, and then we also do retail sales of their packaged or branded herb, and then we offer services in between, such as packaging and pre-rolls, um, non-volatile manufacturing, but really trying to push, trying to help a lot of these brands get out into the marketplace throughout the state of California. And so, go ahead. Oh, may we start with some flowers? Yeah, for sure. So I'll go ahead and start talking about True Humboldt. We recently relaunched our True Humboldt line of flower, uh, we brand, we certified our True Humboldt as uh, Sun and Earth certified. So these are oh, all cool. Yeah, so these are all farms that are Sun and Earth certified that we source from. You can see on the top of each jar, 
So we have Five Sisters Farms, Hummingbird. Yeah, I love the colors. Huckleberry Hill. Yeah. Whitethorn Valley and Dew Point right here. And um, so we started with these five farms and these five flavors, and we're going to expand to more farms and more flavors. So this is where we started right now with our partnership with, with Sun and Earth and with these Sun and Earth farms. So, so literally like in like a minute or two for each one, uh -huh. I'd love to hear from you what you like about each one. Uh -huh. But then what's a sylph? I've never heard that word before. Violet sylph. What is that? So there's a whole story behind violet sylph, and I can't remember the story myself. Um, but it has to do with, I know it has, has something to do with the hummingbird and the fairies in the garden. And I, don't, and I would have to actually look it up to give so you a whole story. So it's a fairy term, a sylph? I think it is. Oh, really? OK. Yeah. And they, um, if you look at our Instagram or their Instagram, it tells about how they named the violet wow. sylph. That's at Hummingbird Farms. Yeah, have you smoked all of these? I have. Yep. I have. So in a minute, can you please tell me what you like about this strain in particular? This strain in particular, um, I really like the visual look of it. It's got great color to it. Um, it has a great flavor. I smoked it and love the nice smell of high. Um, I smoke a lot of herb, but I don't necessarily like the strongest herb. I like a herb that's nice and mellow, and uh, this definitely fit that. Even though it is a higher potency, um, it, it, it had a great highness to it. And, and one last shout out to the farm and where they're located, please. This is Hummingbud Farms, and they're in northern Humboldt County. Woohoo! Cool. Yeah. All right. I think they're in northern. Hope I got that right. <laughs> and what do you like about Johnny's weed? What does there not to like about Johnny's weed, right? So this is Huckleberry Farms. Um, we actually picked their Amalfi. They also have a very popular strain called Whitethorn Rose. Um, we love that one too, but he packaged it in his own brand and we thought we would want to do something different and help get another strain out into the marketplace. So we picked the Amalfi. Um, I just like the smell of it and like the, um, it also had a nice mellow high to it, but it's a high, high potency herb. Um, I didn't smoke a lot of it, but I did enjoy it mm -hmm. and chose it because of the smell and the look of it. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah. And if I may, let's uh, do Whitethorn Valley. Sure. Uh, Whitethorn Valley, they have, we picked uh, the Petro Glue from them. Um, I picked it because it was a nice gassy flavor. Um, I haven't always been a huge OG fan, um, but there's been few that I've found that I have liked, and this was one that I liked the smell and I liked the smoke of it. So I said, okay, they're going to be our gassy strain to start our, our five strain launch right now. So that was why I picked them. Sequoia, so you give the green light or the red light for, for your selections? Um, I, I'm on the team that makes the selection, so I definitely gave some input. <laughs> and both Johnny Huckleberry and Whitethorn Valley, they're both in the Whitethorn area. Yes, they are. Southern Humboldt, Whitethorn area. Got it, got it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, Dew Point, please. Sure, Dew Point. We'll talk a little bit about them. They're out in Honeydew. Um, they're also a Sun and Earth certified farm. We also carry their own line of products. But because they're Sun and Earth certified, we're able to uh, feature them in our Sun and Earth line here. Um, this is a really amazing strain that they have called Purple Banana. It's got a really strong turpy smell, super fabulous terps. Um, you can just, you know, you open the bottle and it just you, punches out at you. Also has a very flavorful um, taste in it, which is why I like this one. It's got a very, uh, lots of terpenes, high terpene profile here. The name one more time, please. This is Dew Point. Do, the, the strain, the name of the strain? Oh, the strain is called Purple Banana. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. And we got Season right here. We do have Season right here. Uh, Season is from Five Sisters Farms. Um, this is her Sticky Star. And again, we picked this one through a selection process. Just really love the smell of it. You know, a lot of how we pick herb is by the smell and how we connect with it. We also recognize it's not just how we connect with the plant, it's how other people connect with the plant. And so I'm not always trying to just pick things that I like, but that definitely is a bonus when I connect with it. But just things that have high terpenes, um, a different variety of smells that someone else would maybe smell it and just really have that impact and smell the terpenes in it. Terpenes are very important in um, how cannabis affects different people's bodies. Um, and so uh, we picked hers because of the, again, it's always the visual look, how it looks as far as um, um, the, the flower structure itself, how it was trimmed, crystals on it, and then of course the smell. Absolutely. And Season is amazing too at Five Sisters Farm. She also does farm stays. And she's in Piercy. She's in Piercy, Southern Humboldt, right by the Mendo County line. County line, yeah. Yep, that's where she's at for sure. Sequoia, you know what I'd love to hear more about? And thank you, by the way. Yeah. It's awesome. Anything else you'd like to talk about? I want to talk about all of them. You know, in the time <laughs> that we have, let, let's, let's do that. Let's do I it. I can go right through it really quick? Please, please. All right, cool. So 
this is Salmon Creek Legacy Co-op. Oh, cool, um, man. They are a co-op in Salmon Creek of, I think, five farms. Um, we carry their flower under a brand called This Weed Is Your Weed right now, but we also have this line of concentrates they just dropped. There's a flavor from each of the farms. What's whose thumbprint is that? That's one of the farmer's thumbprints. He, he said that was a nod to his legacy days. Yeah. Right? <laughs> wow, very so cool. So if they run that through the system, it'll it come up. The record, he said, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't flipping you off. No. <laughs> so yeah, so Salmon Creek Legacy Farms. Um, and so these are have some really unique terpene profiles too. The flavor the, and the smell on these is amazing. I love the branding. It's simple, but it's, it's classy, it's, it's I think. It's very classy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, please. So, that, so that's the Salmon Creek Legacy Farms. May there. I open it? Yep. Yeah. Go ahead, take a smell for yourself. Yeah, dude, it smells so sweet. Smells really good, huh? It's got some good terps in there. And, and again, for the time that we have, let's keep it moving, oh, yep, please. Yep, ready to go right on ahead. Thank, uh, thanks, go ahead. Bigfoot Cannabis Company is a local cannabis dispensary out in Willow Creek that oh, also has oh, a wow. farm out in Willow Creek. Oh, wow. So um, these products are available at their dispensary, but then we also distribute them across the state to retails across California. They have a flower, they have an edible, or a, a gummy edible, and then an infused pre-roll. So that's really cool. We have them on our in our menu. Do you mind taking a step back a little bit, please? No. Thank you, thank you. No. Okay. What else do we got? Yep, and then um, Nana's Delights. This is a really fun new product. Oh, wow. It's a cannabis-infused brownie kit, and we just open it up. It comes in a whole little setup. It has a tin that you can bake it in. All you have to do is add the egg in the water. Isn't that great? <laughs> and awesome. um, and bake some really yummy, ooey-gooey brownies. They're delicious. And it's got some new technology called Dehydratech. Um, the Hydrotech is actually, there's two parts, it's the process um, where they infuse the sugar that's in the brownie mix, but then because of the technology in the infusion, um, when you digest it, it doesn't, it bypasses your liver so it doesn't get broken down in the liver and you get a higher efficacy from uh, the, the product from it not getting broken down in your liver like it traditionally would happen. And then it also gets directly into your bloodstream quicker, so you get more of it quicker. I'll hold this. Yes. And let's cover again like in two minutes, you know yep. what I'm saying? Herba Mate's is a really cool product. We got lemon mint and raspberry, 100 milligram, 20 milligram, super great beverage. Uh, Lost Creek Farms, we carry their flour and these gummies. It's a, a vegan gummy um, that has some great flavors. And then uh, Dew Point, I mentioned them a little bit earlier, but this is their line. They have flour, they have lozenges, comes in a two pack and a 20 pack, and some pre rolls. And um, you sample all of these? I've had everything on here except for I haven't tried the Bigfoot yet. Okay. And I've only had uh, the brownies in the R&D process as we were testing them before they went into production. That's so exciting. Yep. And then one little more last little thing. Yeah. Is my, my Eight Mile Family Farms. Our farm's fallowed this year, but we have some pre-rolls still on the market we're trying to Absolutely. Get so there it is. Absolutely. So these are the products we're currently carrying and really just trying to help small farms and smart, small brands have tools in their toolbox to be able to get their products out to the consumers and the people. So we're just a tool in their toolbox. Thanks so much, Sequoia. <laughs> yeah. The last question, a beautiful way to close this interview, I think would be to share with our audience around the world, uh -huh. the level of experience that exists in the hills of the Emerald Triangle. Again, in, in a minute, in a few sentences, please. Wow, I wouldn't even know how to express that. Like, the, the farmers... I mean, are you guys winging it, or like... Well, I mean, the farmers in the in Humboldt County, and not just the farmers, but their families, and their the wives even, are such amazing medicine makers. And they have knowledge from, from like decades and decades of experience working with the plant, and being able to do it freely, and not be regulated on how they're experimenting, and through trial and error, figuring things out. Everything from genetics, and how they're creating genetics to how they're creating products from the flower, whether it's something that's infused, whether it's an RSO oil, whether it's a you know the terpenes and how they're using the terpenes. Um, the, I, I mean, the hundreds of years of collective experience that's there is really profound, and I don't think is even anything I could ever relay because it's pretty intense. And I've been involved in the community, and specifically the community of women um, that has really given me some knowledge and experience and support that is unparalleled to anything like the collaboration and the, the working together and just supporting each other that has has been there and being able to learn from them all like I didn't necessarily know how to make RSO oil 
but learn from some of the other women in my community. So the sharing of, 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 of experience is really another thing that I think is really important that um, I hope gets to keep going. <laughs> okay, and I'm sorry, in one minute please, can you just share with us the goddess energy that you've experienced in Humboldt County? The goddess energy, I guess, really just has to do with the nurturing and the love and again, the sharing, like being a, and supporting and, and really under, you know, being able to go to my neighbor or my sister or my friend and, and, and know that they're kind of in this with me too and that as I'm not alone and that we're all just um, helping build each other up and give, peop give each other tools and, and even understanding failures and challenges and being able to know that, you know, just because you're having this difficulty or this challenge that um, that we're even at the end of the day we're still here together and still making things work and getting our kids together and and doing things going camping going to the festivals and that's really you know where I, I learned re in the last couple of years to just really be pleased with what I get done every day and have what I can do to help all the brands succeed and there's so much work to do and it's never all going to get done so one this today we're here doing this and helping get the brands out there. Thank you so much, Sequoia. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel.